G'day folks and welcome to another round. Um, we're going to keep plowing through these instructions and uh, we've got another eight to look at now. Um, I think the idea of a tube like this where we just introduce lots of instructions isn't so much that um, you remember all of these mnemonics off by heart and all of the details of the instructions, but um, if you just remember the logic of what each of them does and that way when you're stuck in a fix and you're in the middle of an algorithm and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if I could do X, Y, Z? Um, maybe you'll think of one of these instructions and you'll think, aha, I know how, how to get out of this, you know? I know an instruction that does exactly what I want. And then you can look up the details in some reference manual. Alrighty, so this is just a, another, another tutorial where we introduce a bunch of instructions. So we're going to go through um, B swap first, the byte swap. And this is a really interesting instruction, actually. What it actually does is it changes what's called endianness. Endianness. So we work on systems, or well the, the x86 and x64 architecture are what's called little endian. And there's other chips, or there used to be more of these, I think. Or maybe Motorola uses the, uh, the other one, which is uh, big endian. But what it comes down to is um, when you've got a multi-byte value, say a word, we know that a word is um, two bytes. But uh, in memory, if we've got RAM just here like this, um, endian is about, oh gosh, the endianness is about which way the system draws the number. So if this is low RAM up here, and this is high RAM down here, and say this is our word just here and um, it obviously occupies two two bytes so it's going to take up this amount of space but there's a choice as to which way we put it so if our word is say 256 then um, we know that it's going to have two bytes one of them's going to have a one in it and the other one's going to have a zero in it so we could represent this um, word 256 as either zero and one or alternatively Um, we could put the one first, one zero. So systems where the um, the biggest order byte comes first are called big endian systems. The biggest uh, byte is on the uh, end here, and systems like the one that we use are called little endian because um, yeah, the first byte of a particular value is uh, the smallest byte in the value. So in uh, in our systems, x86 and x64, 256 will look exactly like that. So it'll be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, dot, dot, and then beside that will be the um, other one. Okay, but if the circumstance ever comes up that you've got to um, convert numbers from one system to another, uh, you need to swap the bytes around, which is exactly what B-swap does. Let's have a look. Okay. It doesn't often come up unless you're sort of porting numbers from, or porting um, data from, you know, one of these other chips to um, our AMD or Intel chips. Anyway, um, it takes one parameter, and that's either a red reg 64 or 32, all right, 32 or 64. So note, there's no 16-bit version of this. It's either 32 or 64. So something like B swap EAX, and all it does is reverses every byte in EAX, completely reverses it, gives us the mirror. Uh, logically, B swap RAX is going to reverse all eight bytes of RAX, and uh, yeah, convert the value from uh, little endian to big endian, or vice versa. So let's pretend that the bytes in EAX are A, B, C and D, just like that. That was supposed to be single quotes. Anyway, blow the single quotes, let's not worry about it. Okay, so those are the four bytes in um, EAX. After B swap EAX, it's going to have A, B, C, D. Exactly that. Alrighty, swaps every byte. Nice and easy. So then if you call B swap again, you change the endian this once more. Uh, be back to D C B A. 
Okay, so that's um, that's the B swap instruction, nice and simple. Don't know if it's uh, particularly useful unless you're porting things between these systems, but uh, that's what it does. Okay, so the next instructions that we're going to look at are even simpler. They're um, just for setting and clearing the flags. So the first one is STD, which is um, set the direction flag to one, I'll say. And uh, these are used for flag instructions, oh, not flag, sorry, string instructions, the um, direction flag, but we'll go into that later. Um, when we look at the actual string instructions, we'll look at um, exactly what uh, STD and CLD mean. But uh, CLD is clear the direction flag to zero. Okay, so that using those two there, you um, effectively decide whether the string instructions move up in memory automatically or if they move down in memory automatically. But since we're not looking at string instructions at the moment, who cares? Okay, STC. This one's probably more useful. This is um, set our humble little friend the carry flag to one, and then of course there's CLD, which is no, CLC. You did CLD. Okay, CLC is uh, clear the carry flag. zero. Um, yeah, so that's easy enough. You just set the carry flag to one whenever you want with this instruction. None of these take any operands either. They all just stand on their own, just a mnemonic. Uh, CLC is clear the carry flag to zero, but there's also another one with the carry flag. There's um, CMC, which is complement the carry flag. Or toggle it, in other words. So if the carry flag was one, and the CPU executed this instruction, it would then be zero. Uh, likewise, if the carry flag happened to be zero and the CPU executed this instruction, then it would be changed to one. Okay, so those those are interesting little instructions. Um, they'll come up probably only rarely, but um, yeah, it's good to know them. Alrighty, we'll go over the other page, next page, sorry, and we'll uh, look at the final two instructions for this tute. They're um, bit scan. And we've got two of them. We've got um, BSF, which is bit scan forwards, and we've also got BSR, which is bit scan reverse. Okay, now these are these are pretty interesting, actually. First of all, the um, operands that they take. I think anything's interesting if it can do something sort of slightly strange compared to what C++ is used to. So, yeah, anyway, the operands that they take is, um, for the first, is uh, a reg 16, 32, or 64, so no 8-bit registers. Oh, actually, I also want to mention that um, with B swap, um, you've only got reg 32 or 64. If you want to swap the endianness of a, a word, a 16-bit value, then you use exchange. So e, uh, sorry, x c h g a l a h is b swap for a 16-bit word. Does that make sense? Yeah, I should have mentioned it before. Anyway, uh, where were we? So, okay, um, yeah, the the parameters for um, bit scan. Alrighty, the second one is reg or mem, and it's also 16, 32, or 64 bits. And what these instructions do is they scan op2, this uh, second operand, the source, for a 1 in the bits, and they set the location of that 1 in this uh, first operand. So if we go something like um, BSFAX, and maybe BX, um, it's going to scan the bits in BX, starting from um, the lowest bit and going all the way through to the highest bit, which is uh, bit number 15. And as soon as it finds a 1 somewhere along the line, say it finds one right here at index number 5, uh, it'll set AX to um, 5 to indicate that that's where it found the first bit. And the other one, BSRAX, 
and BX if we're using um, two registers. You, know, you can use whatever you want. Um, this does pretty much the same thing, only instead of scanning from the uh, lowest bit to the highest, it starts at the highest bit and scans to the lowest. Okay, so we do need to go through just a couple of little nuances here. First of all, I want to mention that it also sets the zero flag. So if there's no bits, uh, if there's no bits set to one at all, then the zero flag will be set. And if there's no bits set to one at all, then uh, it won't change op one either. So let's have a look at this. If we just go something like mov uh, bx and zero and bsf ax bx. Okay, in this instance, there's no bits in bx that are set to one. So, I mean, it can't set AX to zero to uh, indicate that, since uh, that would mean that, that bit number zero in BX was a one, and that's not the case. So what they decided to do was make it so that um, it sets the zero flag as well, which is what's going to happen. ZF will equal one. Technically, that's a nine, but I meant to draw a one. Okay, ZF will equal one, and AX won't change. Okay, if there's, if there's no bits at all, then uh, AX won't change. Alright, so that's enough of that example. If there is any bits, then the zero flag will be cleared to zero, and uh, AX will change to uh, the index of that bit. Let's move into BX, something slightly more interesting. We'll go zero, 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 one, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so I've just moved this random binary value into BX so that we can have a look at the uh, exact difference between BSF and BSR. BX, BX. Okay, so this first one just here, uh, this is the lowest bit right here. This is um, bit number 0. And all the way up here is bit number 15 in uh, BX. So bit scan forwards is going to start looking from 0 and moving in this direction. The other one, bit scan reverse, is going to start from bit 15 and look in this direction. Okay, so first of all, bit scan forwards is going to uh, look at this one. It's going to say, no, that's not a 1. So then it'll look at this next bit, which is uh, bit index 1, and it'll say, yes, that's a 1. So it'll set AX to 1. Um, it'll clear the zero flag to indicate that uh, a bit was found. And uh, yeah, then it's done. Now the bit scan reverse uh, is going to start over this end. It's going to check this bit, uh, bit number 15, and it's going to say, nope, that's not a 1. Check this one, it'll say, nope, that's not a 1. It'll check this one, it'll say, nope, that's not a 1. But the next one, it'll check and it'll say, yes, that's a 1. But um, what you have to be aware of is it's not going to count this as um, uh, bit 0, 1, 2, 3. That's not bit number 3. I mean, just because it's scanning reverse, it's not going to rename the bits. Um, this is bit, what's that, 14, 13, 12. This is bit number 12 from either direction. It doesn't matter. That's always bit number 12. So, yeah, you might be inclined to think that uh, it would start counting from over here, but it doesn't. It always starts counting from over here on the um, right. Well, the, the, the smallest bit is um, bit 0. Oh uh, yeah, okay. That's that's pretty 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 good really. Um, okay, so what's it gonna do? It's gonna set to AX to twelve. Comma. AX to twelve. Uh, it's gonna clear the zero flag. And yeah, we're done. So that's bit scan forwards and bit scan reverse. And you use them to tell uh, the indexes of the first bit and indeed the last bit of a register or memory operand. Beautiful. Okay, well that's about it for this shoot, so thank you for listening. Adios.